Hey guys, welcome to my space, which is actually my bedroom, but it's what I've got, so it's what I'll make do with. Um, I finally got my microphone working. It's the Rode Mic Video Go, is it? Yeah, and finally got the right cable to plug it into the GX8, which is what I'm filming on now. And I've also finally got the right cable for me to plug it into the MacBook so that I can actually record both my screen and decent quality audio as well for you. Which means I'm finally going to take you into Lightroom and show you my focus stacking workflow. So let's jump in, let's get to it. Okay then guys, we're in the computer and I should probably say Welcome to my brand new MacBook Pro. I've only had it about a month or so. It's the 15 inch model, touch bar, everything else. And because I'm technically a student, I actually also got the Pro Apps bundle as well. For 180 quid, I got Final Cut Pro, which is what I'm using now for my video editing, as well as Main Stage, um, Compressor, Motion, and Logic Pro X for 180 quid so yeah dead happy with that but anyway let's get into Lightroom okay so this is from my previous video um, so I actually took a few exposures because it was so windy this day let's have a look at that one that one's a bit blurry so I think we can get rid of that one straight away So what we need to do to start with is just pick which images we actually want to use. So at the moment I think it's looking like that's the sharpest for the background and that's my foreground. So what I'm going to do is hold shift, highlight those two images and then right click, edit in and then open as layers in Photoshop. So just wait for that to boot up. Okay, so what this now does is it'll open each of those two images as a different image layer. As you can see on the left hand side there. If I click on the little eye symbol there on each one, I can see which one I'm working with at any time. So the top layer there is the foreground and then the bottom layer is the background. So what I'm going to do to start with is I'm going to highlight both the layers, go into edit and then auto align layers. I'm just going to keep it on auto there this is basically just in case there was any camera movement between the two shots this should correct it out so they should be in line with each other so let's just give that a go see what it gives us and then you can see there that it has in fact shrunk down the front exposure because there's such a difference in distance between our foreground and background when the focus has been moved it's actually slightly affected our actual focal length in the lens so that's what this is corrected out there as you can see from that white border along the bottom so what I'm going to do now is actually crop uh, let's go with oh, that's the crop tool there. Okay, so I reckon let's go 
with that for now. I may not necessarily stick with this ratio. In fact, let's go with 4 by 5 Then I just want to bring it away from the edges so that I'm not playing around with the border that's made whilst auto aligning. So let's go with that. And then we can see there that we're not using the boundaries that it produced. So now that I've cropped it, what I'm going to do is select the brush tool and then on each layer I'm going to click on the little image and then create a layer mask which is this little symbol at the bottom. I'm going to do that for each image and now it's literally a case of using either white or black to basically colour in, it's so either colour in or erase each layer individually so that we're showing just the parts that we want. So just going for a nice normal round brush like this, just increase the size a little bit for the background. Let's go with that. Okay so I've got my brush ready, so black is basically your eraser. So on this front image here, see this is the top layer, which we know is our foreground layer. So I'm going to click on the layer mask, and with my brush in black, I'm going to paint out the background, and you see instantly that's coming straight into focus. So I'm revealing the bottom layer as I'm doing this. So I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit. I'm gonna shrink my brush down. And let's start going closer to the edges. Now one tip when you're doing this is just do shorter strokes fairly slowly so you can be more accurate but if you try and do the whole thing in one go and you just go slightly over then you've got to undo that and then you've got to redo the whole thing whereas if you're doing shorter strokes like that if I just went down a little bit I can click command Z and it's just that little bit that's had to redo. Okay. So, because this signpost is so close to us, I think that probably most of this heather is actually in focus as well, which it is, as you can see. So I'm going to do all of this. down close to the post like you just it's like magic almost and everything just becomes in focus in the background so as we keep getting closer to the between the foreground and background, just keep zooming in, shrinking down our brush that little bit more. Try and get those borders correct. Ok, 
Okay. Great stuff. So, yeah, I'm quite happy with that already. So, all I need to do now, I've not even touched the bottom layer mask there. I've literally just erased the top layer all the way around the signpost, which has revealed the back layer to be in focus. So, from here, what we have to do is click on File and Save. And then we can go straight back into Lightroom. Yeah, and our stack has appeared in our timeline there. So, as you can see, it says it's got the normal file name with edit2.tiff. It's a TIFF file now. So, now we can just edit it however we please. So, I'm going to warm it up a little bit to start with. Because it was actually a fairly um, bit of a glow from the sky. I'm going to leave the tint as it is. Uh, my exposure, going by the histogram here. Going to increase the exposure a little bit, but I'm then going to create a grad filter from the top there just to bring back some detail in the sky and colour as well. You can see there's that pinkish reddish tint in the sky. So this was around sunset remember. Yeah. Just adjust that. Okay. Cool. So then in highlights I'll boost a little bit. Shadows, there aren't very really many shadows, but you can see down the bottom of the lamppost here it is highlighting blue. So I'll bring those up a little bit. Okay. Uh, I think in terms of blacks and whites, I'll light up a little bit blacks as well, just a tiny bit, just plus 17 there. Uh, clarity, now I do like a little bit of clarity, especially where we've got things like heather and stuff like that, and with this lamppost here for example, it's really nice textures to it. So I do like to use just a little bit to sort of bring out those textures. Let's go there. Um, Dehaze, I try not to use too much. But we might just add a little bit in there. That'll do for me. I'm going to leave the tone curves alone for now. Um, going to remove chromatic aberration, I always do that. I usually do these first on any images that I'm editing. Um, in reality, I should have done it before I started focus stacking. <laughs> but there we are. Because it won't allow me now to do it unless I go in and find it manually. Oh well, just leave that unticked. And then, yeah, for the purposes of this video, I think that image is pretty much done. So, yeah, in one image now, we've got the background in focus. So, we've got the peak summit of Molvamai, included in range there. And we've got the signpost from the Office Dyke Path. You can see a little bit on this one, I have rushed it a little bit. You can just see around the outlines where I've not quite gone into the detail I usually would do. But still, that is basically how I focus stack my images. So I hope that you found that useful. Um, as always, if you've got any questions, feel free to drop a comment and I'll try my absolute best to reply to everyone down there. Thank you so much for watching my videos and for following my channel. Um, it's still just slowly growing, which I'm dead happy with. Um, 
it's already got far further than I ever thought it would do when I started, which is just over a year ago now actually. Despite how inconsistent I've been <laughs> in terms of uploads, I am dead happy with how this channel's gone so far. If you go back to my very first video, and then just from my more recent videos, you can see how much I think that I've improved with the video quality and just the production and editing as well. But keep working, we'll keep putting videos out there and see where we get to. So thank you very much for watching and see you all in the next one. Ta-da!